I got my clay a little bit too hot. It's wax based, kind of a petroleum based clay. I actually warm it up in the microwave. Um, but if you're not careful with it, it can actually turn, you know, like to soup. It gets very thin. It'll literally boil. So if you're not careful, it holds its shape and you'll grab, you'll go to grab it, your finger will go right into molten clay that you can't wipe off your hands. And you can literally get blistering if you're not careful. Pretty dangerous stuff. clay is applied by hand, I use a flat metal tool to scrape over the entire surface of the monument. This makes it relatively smooth and ready to transfer the drawing. So you can see I broke one of the spindles accidentally. I was being a little too, too rough, uh, but a little bit of wood glue to get it right back together again. But you can see this really is just meant to be an armature. So no detail, really just going for the, the simple underlying shape. And then when the clay is added, it will actually be mounted. Clay added, I'll add other spindles. Um, the handles, uh, and then it really should come together when you when you see all that. So we're really at the point where I'm finishing up detail on top of the major forms, cracks in boards, spaces in between, cracks in the floor boards, that sort of thing. Pieces of sheet metal are used to section off the finished sculpture into 12 pieces. Then we are ready to mold. Mmm, looks almost good enough to eat, but not recommended. Silicone rubber is then mixed and applied carefully with a brush. The rubber gets into every minor detail, even a fingerprint. After the entire monument is covered with a sufficient amount of rubber, it's time to add the mother mold. The mother mold consists of plaster and hemp. After it is set, it's removed with the rubber. staples through there yeah, it'll hold just so it won't sag yeah. and you'll need to be careful when it's cooling to stand it up yeah. because you have the same issue down yeah, here which is part of the sculpture that we don't want to let that sag yeah. so if you can stand up that right. up. 
as it's cooling. Would it help to make sure we don't have those edges go in, you know, keep them like that? Would it help once you pour the final coat in to pour warm water in it? So that if it's pushed down. Uh-huh. Because if it's warm, then it hopefully won't set it too fast. Um, but that hydrostatic pressure literally would help to push it. Okay, let's plan on that minute. That should help. Very similarly to a uh, concrete pin in a concrete form, so that the forms can't spread. See what I'm saying? It'll hold yep. it rigid. Yep, yep. And that's it. That's the last step. That one's ready for slurry. Beautiful. Paraffin wax. As the individual parts are finished and waxed and cooled, they're taken into the slurry room. The slurry room is where investment or shell molds are created. The wax will undergo a series of dipping and added silica sand between each dip. This process builds a thickness to the mold walls. It's this same shell mold that will eventually be able to withstand the heat of molten bronze. been what they call flashed or burned out. It's what, you can see the burn marks. This is what they call it, the lost wax method, the lost wax method of casting all the wax gets lost out of it. See the bronze was slowly making its way down. The entire aspect of this process must be approached with the greatest of care because it involves the greatest risk. When the orange glowing crucible comes out of the furnace, the bronze is over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The artisans clear off the impurities, check the temperature, for the pour. Here they're pulling hot molds from out of the furnace and getting them ready. If they're not sufficiently warm, when the bronze hits the mold, they can split open. Once the bronze is sufficiently cool, the shell mold is chipped away to reveal the sculpture. So we're going to see Brent um, who's doing all the metal chasing. He's gonna weld all of the components together. The panel is made up of 12 pieces. He wasn't sure that his shop space was big enough for the project and so, but it turns out he does have enough space so we're gonna go check that out. I guess what you'll see is, first he'll actually tack weld some of the panels together. So there'll be some different things that we'll actually get to see today. If you have one panel that's shifted off just a little bit, it shifts the next one off even a little bit more, so by the time you get to the opposite side of the, uh, opposite side of the, the eight feet of monument, um, you're way off and you've got big gaps between the, um, between the seams. So did you get by the foundry? What's that? Did I get by? Yeah, is there some of your stuff? Yep. Yep, the stands are all done except for one part. Gonna close that gap. He's just gonna close it with this. This brute strength. Is that it? What? Did you do it? Yeah, see how much closer it is? It is closer, yeah. We're just bumping it through there. Oh. Worked out most of the day. This one is... Okay, that's... Come here, come here, Tyson. Look at this. Can you see this cheesy metal right there? Uh, yeah, yeah. Today I wanted to have it a lot further. Okay, is this a, I'm glad you're here. Is this a straight line from here to here, like here? Or have you sculpted a 
there, that looks nice, you guys, not it? Yeah, that's yeah. proper. Yeah, that's proper. This should be. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. This is definitely an arc on Okay, you see a little bump in there. I will get that out. I'm gonna clean all this up, but that's there now. I usually hold that tight. Okay. I'm gonna watch that corner. Yeah, just push it down so it doesn't slide out. That's not so bad now. That makes me so much happier. See, it used to go whomp and stay there. It would wobble, a wobba, and stay. Now it's it's holding its own. Okay. See, and I, I didn't want to put that thing in the back until I had, it stood on itself and I'd resolved all these. This has been a, a problem. This was one of those spots too that was, it was like this or in. Dang it, this has showed up again. See that? Dang, that's really sticking out. Yeah. Feel that? Yeah, I can, well, I, can, here. I can see it. Oh, dang it. You can't just whack that, huh? But no, then it won't, it, like, it, won't. the whole thing is, you know. It's going to ski wampus. I'm thinking once I get that rack on the back, I might be able to use it to push out and pull things to do a final setting of it. But I didn't want to do that thinking I can save myself mm. without first trying again to fix all these things, okay. right? And this it looks straight up and down, but once you get over to that corner, that whole corner is back. Is that not, is that just because it's hanging? I don't think it would be because it's no, hanging. No, that's the wobble. Yeah. That's the wobble. Push on that and it'll pop. Push harder. Which pull out like, see? Oh, oh yeah. That's terrible. That is so bad. See, because I don't know if that stainless thing I have is strong enough to hold that. I would have to cut, cut a big cut and clamp it down again and re-weld it. <laughs> See, that is that's just come out. That used to be, I worried over that. I had that perfect at one time. Maybe that's one I'll have to cut again. Once it's installed, it will be really strong. Yeah. But, but in transporting it, this action yeah. could be its undoing. Most projects come with their share of concerns and troubleshooting. Because this monument was one of a kind, it was no exception. However, once the steel framework was welded inside, all concerns were put to rest. Well, that bad boy's standing up on its own, isn't it? The cement's not level. No, but it's uh, it's not falling over on you. That's a good sign. Well, I can throw a little texture on that, but there really isn't any texture on me wearing your right lens. It's plastic. You won't be able to tell. Okay, that's fine. We'll just leave it. Obviously, that's going to get hit, right? That whole world. No, I thought I'd need that. But... <laughs> you lie. That looks good. That has good character. How are you feeling? I'm fine, thanks. The foundry does their sandblasting in this room. However, the monument was so large that they had to pull out extra bags of sand to make room. By watching closely, you'll see the surface of the metal go from a shiny to a matte as the sand blasts it. This process prepares the monument for the next step. Ted Tyson? Yeah. And once you're up above, when you're spraying and it's coming down, yeah. rinse it off. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, I'm 
press it downward as it goes down. So I'll just watch this real quick. Okay. I'm going to spread it here. And now the soap is running. This process is known as the patination process. The process of adding chemicals and heat to the bronze causes instant oxidation. This process is very gratifying and is what gives any sculpture its beautiful color. So it looks black right now and now it's How would you do you have a spray gun? Uh -huh. It'd be just like ferric. Okay, so you see how I, I put more ferric in the corners. So if you look at this, see how dark it is right there, ferric -y? Yeah. Just stay that and then blend it out. And I did it in all the corners. So I'm not rubbing it off on purpose. Okay. laced with iron. And it, it, water goes out, the iron sticks on. What I'm spraying on is nails destroyed with nitric acid. Liquefied. Somebody, but... <laughs> Looking good. Here you can see we're getting ready to pack it up and send it off to its new home. The monument is carefully strapped with rigging in place and prepared for its wooden crate.
given one more blast of air to remove any particles or dust that might damage the patina in transit.
angle of the script. <laughs> Pause.